Hello, friends. Thank you for joining me today. My name is Dan, and we're all the way up to Daily Art Adventure number 574. <laughs> I call it here Handling the Chaos. Now, that's a, a, a completely fusing, confusing to everybody else except you regulars, so welcome. If you want to join me and be a regular, this is for you. I want to, and this is going to be a very short broadcast because I'm taking off in about an hour to go deliver a lecture in Cary, and I hope to broadcast that as well. So short broadcast right now. I want to address one very specific element. Let me define chaos, first of all. My approach to painting. In the underpainting stages, one of my chief goals is to create enough chaos on the underpainting so that when I get to the overpainting, a term that most people don't use, but I do because of I draw such a distinction between those two, chaos in the underpainting. So when you get to the overpainting, you have lots to respond to. You don't have to be making stuff up, so to speak, on the fly. It's, the can it's already on the canvas talking to you. You just have to interact with it, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you two very specific examples of what I'm, what I'm talking about here. First, I'm going to show you an example of what I've already... I did this the other day when you weren't watching. Let me zoom in here real quick. So, let me get these out of your way a little bit. All right, can you see this red line, especially up here? That red line was made with one of these oil sticks, right? Oil painting sticks. I just went whoop, at some point. In fact, I just made a few more of them over here a little while ago when, again, when you weren't looking. All right, now this end of the red line, I haven't interact, interacted with that in the, I'm in the overpainting stage right now. But I want you to notice this part right here. So try to ignore this. I was finishing this part of the painting. So I'm doing essentially opaque shades of green, you know, yellowish green, purplish green. Did you know there's such a thing as purplish green? Yeah, bluish green, greenish, brownish green, yellowish green, all these different colors and different values. So try to make it look like a, kind of like a, a, a hillside a wall of trees well here's what i did with that red line that was unbroken in some places i covered it up with a, with this opaque green paint other places i just smudged over it a little bit so you can still see it peeking through and other places i actually painted up to the red line on both sides and sort of carved it skinnified it made it more skinny so i did all kinds of things to that red line and i may not be done especially from here here upward but here from here down i'm probably finished am i aiming at the right place yeah um down here i'm probably finished and i want you to see just the effect that that is now that's not the only bit of chaos there's another line here another one here another one here and i did the same thing to all of those just the red one is the easiest one to see so that's the reason i'm pointing it out now some of you especially you if you're a new a uh, follower of mine, if you're a new watcher, you'll be saying, what's that supposed to be? <laughs> Forgive me, I always get snarky. <laughs> Bad habits are hard to break. <laughs> okay, you would never say it. You would say, what, pray tell? <laughs> Mr. Nelson, <laughs> is that red line supposed to be? And the answer is, of course, it's not supposed to, like, be anything in the picture. It's not like, you know, a power line, a red power line. It's not like a vapor trail of a red rocket. No, no, it's not, not anything. What is it? What is it is just an interesting mark. Does that make sense? Okay, so there's one that I've already done. Now that you maybe kind of have the idea, I'm going now to do one. Hello, Mark Toomey. Good to have you on board. Let's do another one. Right up here, need to get this down a little bit. All right, so same thing, ironically, Eve, I didn't do this on purpose, but just the way it turns out, ironically, 
also a red line. Okay, so this one goes all the way from here, down here. That's as far as I, no, again, it goes down here. I'm not sure if you saw that entire movement, but it's about two and a half feet long. Whoops. Okay, we're okay. So I'm gonna, let's paint this building right now. And I, I wanna demonstrate to you now, again, and especially for you, you new timers, <laughs> new timers, that's a good word, you newcomers. Why is that there? What is it? Is that supposed to be something? It's not supposed to be anything. Do you understand? It's just an interesting mark. My goal in the un, all the underpainting stages is to create enough chaos. By the way, here's another red line. Can, can you see that one? Yeah, I think so. Right there. A little bit more intense color. Here's a yellow one. And it's not just lines, of course, it's marks, it's all kinds of stuff, but I'm pointing out lines at the moment. Okay, so it's not supposed to be anything, it's just an interesting mark. In fact, and before I even get started, I'll go ahead and tell you that this, this wall of this building um, could be a little bit boring because it's a little bit repetitive. Now, this, when you repeat something like this on purpose, that's called rhythm. It's a principle of design called rhythm. Uh, and it's a real delicate balance because you have to have enough repetition and not too much. I almost have too much here. But the fact that I have this abstract mark going right through the middle of the building is going to help me. Okay, let's mix up some paint over here. Again, for you new newcomers, I will uh, bring, whoop, whoop, bring it down to my palette just for a second so you can see what's going on. One of these days, I'm going to shoot with two cameras so I can do this kind of thing real slick. Titanium white, um, fast dry titanium white, okay? That Alcad fast drying titanium white. Otherwise, titanium white takes a long time to dry, and I don't have a long time. I, I think that's too bright. Add, let's add a little bit of uh, oxide red to that. I have yellow ochre, titanium white, and oxide red. And I don't know if this is the right color, by the way. I won't know till I put it up on the painting. All right? Back to the painting then. I'm gonna take my glasses off. I'm seeing too well. <laughs> It's funny, but it's true. Now, and by the way, here's another random black line. And I'm doing the same thing with it. I'm not covering it up. I'm actually using it a little bit, painting around it a little bit. Honestly, I started doing that, that kind of thing years ago, and it still surprises me the degree to which our, our mind I'll say our eye doesn't mind seeing those um, chaotic or non-realistic elements in a painting. It amazes me how much our, our brain is willing to give leeway. As long as the mark has a pleasant panache. <laughs> I'm sure that's French. As long as it has a pleasant je ne sais quoi. <laughs> okay, I'm stuck in French now. As long as it has a certain, um, what's the Italian word I use sometimes? Okay, so let's, for, let's forget French and Italian. Let's talk about painting. So here I am now, I'm running up to that red line. I, I, up here, I wasn't interacting with it really at all. Here, I think I'm gonna cover up the red line more or less completely. I'm not going to struggle and try to make sure I cover it up. I'm not angry at it, but I think I'm going to cover it up. Now down here, for some reason, I'm inclined to not cover it up, but make it much thinner. Now all the decisions that I'm making right now, those kinds of choices, um, I can, I can, I'm, I'm free to second guess. I'm not, I, I don't, I don't finish, so to speak, in one fail swoop. That's old English. <laughs> Short for fatal swoop, I believe. 
<laughs> um, so j just because I choose to do one thing with this red line at one given moment doesn't mean I have to uh, um, stick with that decision. I can, I can change my mind. But at the moment, I did cover up, partly cover up, and, and make skinny up here. I don't know what I'm going to do. I call this the, 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 this whole process that I'm doing right now, I call it the final edit layer. And just like those words suggest, it is at this point in the painting process that I make editorial decisions. I decide what to keep and what to cover up because I'm using almost exclusively opaque, you know, paint with, paint with white in it, titanium white in it, so it's opaque, therefore it covers up stuff. Logical, get it? So in this phase, this stage of the painting process, I'm editing, just like you see me doing with that red line right now. Now, I think one of the ways to describe what I'm after When I'm done with this building right here, I will want this red line that I, that is the focus of our attention right at the moment. I will want this red line to be somewhat visible, somewhat seen, yet certainly diminished from what it was. It already is significantly diminished. Is it not? It is not. I mean, it is. <laughs> That's confused English. <laughs> Okay, so up here, you see, I, com I just completely covered it up right there. So how do I know how much to cover up and how much to keep visible, to, to leave uncovered? And the answer, of course, is I don't. It's I'm painting by eye. I'm, I'm painting by how it looks. I have no idea. You know, I'm not thinking like ratios. Oh, I should diminish the appearance of this line by 64%. <laughs> Nothing like that, right? I'm just painting until I think it looks good. Now, it's quite, quite in sharp and intense right there. We see a little bit of it there, 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 there. I think I'm pretty happy with how that looks right, right now. Doesn't mean, again, that I can't come back in, in a subsequent layer. One of the characteristics of, I'm in a new phase of my career, for the, for, again, for you newcomers, just in the last month. And I think this is like a 15 year shift, so it's not something that happens <laughs> every other week. Um, and one of the differences is, I'm going to give myself permission to finish paintings out to a longer degree. All right. Now, I'm going to put my glasses back on, see how that looks. Yeah, that's all right. Now, I'm going to save these brushes with that color on them and pick up some smaller ones. I, want to show, I am not done, I'm not finished interacting with that uh, dark red line. As you can see there, I've diminished it considerably, right? But here's a trick. So you and I both know that this dark red line is underneath this overpainting, right? Yes, we do, because you just saw me paint on top of it. Now I've mixed up a color pretty close to that color of red. Again, I've mixed up some red. And I'm doing little bits, mostly outline-y kind of stuff, little bits of red here and there, here and there, near that red, that earlier red line, the underneath red line. Why am I doing that? Well, because I know something that I want you to know. I said, I've said this many times, so you, you regulars, repeat after me. Our eye enjoys 
being fooled. That's so counterintuitive. Let me say that again. And when I say the I, of course, I mean our, our mind, the seeing part of our brain, enjoys being tricked, fooled, manipulated. All those words are correct. Our eye enjoys, enjoys being fooled in a lot of ways. But in this case, with, with one very, very particular element, it is this. Our eye, eye enjoys being fooled about what's on top of what. So when a fresh virgin eyeballs come approach my painting and they're, they're moving around and at some point they, they skitter over here and they, they see little vestiges, little leftover pieces of that red line. And if they look at it at all, they go, oh, that, rot, that red line's underneath this tan beige paint. But while they're doing that, then they also see these new red lines that I just put on on top of the beige paint, you see? And then their brain goes because <laughs> they're trying to figure out, oh, wait, is that underneath or is that on top? Is this underneath or is that? I can't tell what's on top of what. I'm, I'm doing sort of like an irritated voice at the moment, partly just to make the point that that creates an aesthetic buzz. A little bit of joy juice gets released in our brain when that happens. Isn't that crazy? Our eye enjoys if you will, being tricked. So, I, now look at that building. Let me zoom back in so you can see it as much as possible. Isn't that sweet? Now, I'm not done, of course, so let, let's go ahead and, and do the thing that I always do, which is, once you've painted in any color whatsoever, you almost always follow up by mixing a slightly lighter version of what you just put up there and put the slightly lighter stuff on top of the stuff you put down just a few minutes ago. And you could say, why? <laughs> sometimes, sometimes I just have to, I don't know what the word is. I don't want to say pull rank. <laughs> um, I'm sure I could come up with some kind of rationalistic explanation as to why this is true but I don't want to take that much energy that much time right now I'm just going to tell you just because it works you could say well I don't think it works <laughs> by the way what I just did right there there's another random line has nothing to do with anything a black one this time and right there I just painted on both sides of it thus not only it doesn't mean anything not only did i leave it there i actually accentuated it by painting around it isn't that crazy and it looks kind of cool okay so, but what i'm doing right now is the lighter color of beige and then some of you would say well if you did that with the beige shouldn't you do it with the red good thinking woohoo you are learning. Way to go. Absolutely. Now, I mean, there's so little red there, you could almost get away, but no, it's going to be even better. Yes, you're exactly right. I'm going to mix up a slightly lighter and warmer in this case. It almost always, when, when, you're, when you want to do a lighter red, you make it warmer, more yellow. So now I'm going to look how I'm holding my brush now. My goodness, hardly ever hold my brush in that manner. And at some point here, I want to actually do this very light red, literally on top of the original red mark. <laughs> That's great. There you go. I don't know, I don't know what you think about that building. Um, I like it quite a bit. Now, I, th we're, not, we're not done with the building because we have at least two stages left in this painting to go. So let me back up again for you newcomers and define, de define some of my terminology. My, my final edit layer for, for many years was in fact the last step of the painting process. So when it was called final edit, it really meant final. Well, I've kept the name, but it has changed. It's 
I now have at least two steps after final edit layer. And uh, the, one of those is broken color. But tell you what, like, let's wrap up this broadcast by jumping ahead. So in a sense, I'm going to technically leave my final edit layer and work on this building. See, I'm just making it, I'm doing sky holes. <laughs> That's why they shouldn't be called sky holes because they're building holes. Should be called tree holes. So I'm doing tree holes um, be around behind this tree, which the building is peeking through. Okay, so broken color. By the way, the two layers that are yet to come are number one, broken color, and number two, then after the entire painting is dry, I will reglaze whatever colors I want, reglaze probably, almost always, the entire painting, and then redo darks and lights. It's not, not extensively, it's a pretty, it's a pretty quick operation. When it, is not, it is not nearly as extensive as the earlier layers. All right, but let's, let's jump ahead just for fun and do some broken color. So at the moment, I have broken color is a distinct and separate step all by itself. I do wonder if in years to come, might actually do what I'm doing right now, which is incorporate the uh, broken color stage in, into one of the earlier stages and not make it separate. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter whether I end up doing that or not. So I just did purple in, a, in several of those windows. Again, is that because I, you know, look at the photograph and I go, huh, doggone, there's purple in those. Nope, 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 of course. Nothing like that. No, 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 no. Fairly new terminology for me. Here it is. Listen to this. In the first half of our painting journey, most of us are learning how to paint stuff that looks like stuff. Paint stuff that looks like stuff. That's a great journey to be on. Second half, and this is, I don't mean chronological, but, or I don't mean, I don't mean like even, like, you know, you should spend the same amount of time, half your life in one, no, no, no. First stage of the journey, now I'm doing green, broken color green, so I've got purple and green in those windows. Not done yet. First half of journey, you learn to paint stuff that looks like stuff. Second half of your journey, you learn to paint stuff that looks like paint. Got it? So all these things that I'm doing here today, um, of course, they're built on a foundation, in my case, of the ability to draw well. I can paint stuff that looks like stuff. That's easy. But I've departed from that goal. And now my goal is to paint stuff that looks like paint. Much more interesting. Another way to put that was early stages. So I have purple windows, green windows, and blue windows right now. Just a little bit of interest and it looks quite nice. I don't know if you guys can see the difference. It's pretty subtle. But the broken color should be able to go not just in the windows, but even in the, the wall of the building itself. So, oh boy, this gets tricky. <laughs> I'm going to mix up here a dirty mid-tone uh, blue, ultramarine blue. So it's the same value as what's already there. But what's there is pale, tan, beige, you know, warm white, whatever you want to call it. Very close to a, a, a like a very close to a Naples yellow, actually, for those of you who name things by a oil painting color. But now I'm doing this slightly dirty blue. Ooh, nice. See, now I've kept the blue kind of close to the, to the tree line here. 
Is that a cop out? It might be. <laughs> Is it going to stay a cop out? It might. <laughs> if I were, if I were a better painter, if I were a good painter, I would paint better. Okay, but I'm being kind of bold now. I've got some pale aqua green. And that's probably enough. I don't want to overdo that. So there you go. That might be... Now, I've got one more layer, which is glaze over this whole thing. Oh, I didn't do anything up here yet. See, the, the red line up here is still un, unmolested, if you will. I haven't, I haven't done anything to it up there. Do I have time? Sure, sure, sure. Let me go just a few minutes longer. So let's tackle. Let me look at the photograph now and see. Now, what, tell me what exactly is happening up there. Oh, yeah. So in my painting, I, I, I don't know if this is the same building as that or not. In my painting, it's looked like this is a different building than that one. Uh, and I like it better that way. <laughs> so <laughs> that's a mistake I'm going to call on purpose. I'm going to say, nah, I, I like this divider. Because in the, in the photograph, I, I think that's all one face. Just, but it does have this element in it. All right. And uh, I also like the fact that it's a different color, that it's kind of a grayish version. Okay, this gives me a good, a good opportunity to just explain, describe. I've, I've, I've said this before, so I'm repeating. Let me say it again. In the overpainting stage, especially in the, in the final edit phase, you spend a lot of time matching what's already on the canvas that is color matching so i'm over here now um mixing up yeah i'll show you just real quick i'll give you a wild circus ride hang on there you go so I, i'm mixing up actually i just took a whole bunch of colors that were already on my palette purple red beige blue because i wanted a a gray all right by the way that's good evidence of the fact that um, muddy colors, mud has nothing to do with color. If it did, this, oh, look at I matched it perfectly. Bingo, I'm happy, that doesn't always happen. In other words, I was trying to match this color and I just accidentally, so to speak, nailed it. And here I am again, playing with that red line the question is, how much do I want to keep? And it's real easy to make these edits. Um, uh, I'm going to cover up more. Okay, so up here, at the moment now, I only have two little bits of that red line showing right here and right here. And I feel like that's appropriate. I feel like that's, that's about how much I want to show. More than that, I, it feels like to me, and it would be... Uh, contrivy. What's the word I'm looking for? I feel like I, I tried too hard to make to do something cute. Does that does that make sense? Now, this end of the building needs a, needs a lot of work. Now, uh, oh, by the way, no, 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 that doesn't mean I'm going to cover up. Tons and tons. No, no, no. In this final edit, you never cover up tons and tons. You let as much of the underpainting show through as you can absolutely stand. <laughs> and if you're new to this technique, you let more show through than you can stand. <laughs> so do you see? This was all dark green, like as if this, I don't know what this is. Oh, it's a, it's a window, greenish. It's a, uh, and I'll paint that in a minute. But it, it, it bled over into this building, but instead of covering it all up, I just defined the edge of this building and let the green still show here. Do you see? And that, look how much more interesting that is. As you can hear, I, you, I put an awful lot of weight down on this concept of interesting, interesting marks. Huge, huge principle 
in my painting world. Um, I've got some, I want to do something down here. I'm going to, um, and I need a, I, again, so I'm matching color, matching what's already there. And you see, it looks like now, like this is dark and this is light. And I want to keep that. I like that two-tone. That would be a mistake, in my opinion, to to obliterate that distinction. I like that distinction. So I've just, but there's a, there's a dark pencil line right here that I'm in final edit and I don't like it very much. It's too much, you could say too much of a good thing. That pencil line, As, and for you, again, for you newcomers, yes, I use pencil, not at the beginning of my painting process, but late, late, late in the painting process more than once, and I may, may very well use pencils again before I'm done with this painting. So my, the pencils that I use are not uh, comparable. They don't relate to the old traditional oil painting technique of doing a pencil drawing and then, and then coloring it, you know, doing paint on top of it. No, 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 this is different than that. In that world, the artists did not want the, the, their charcoal lines to show. I very much do want my pencil lines to show. Okay, so I, I fixed that now. I didn't, I didn't get mad at that pencil line and cover it up. You could still see it. It's just much more subtle than it was. Now, I want to go back up to this part and do what I always do. Just come back with a slightly lighter color. Now, I don't know if what's on my brushes is the right color or not. Yeah, that looks pretty good. I said a little while ago that I accidentally nailed, it got exactly the, the right color. And, and I say that partly because it, it's true and partly to encourage you students because some of you think that, oh, if I would, you would say to yourself, oh, I wish I was a good painter so I would could always match, you know, get exactly the color I want. Well, no, that's, that's ridiculous. I mean, maybe there are savants. <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe there's somebody on the, um, on the spectrum, you know, that can do that kind of thing. Genius child painter can match, match colors perfectly every time. Well, yeah, good for them. <laughs> I don't want to be that good. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you know what I mean or not. What's the Asperger's spectrum? That's what I'm looking for. I don't want to be on the Asperger's syndrome. Uh, the spectrum. <laughs> I bless, bless all the people and all the parents of all the people of children who are. All right. Okay. Okay, good. Time for dinner. Now that I've done all that nice painting, watch this, I find it a little too orderly. Now before I leave, before I go to dinner, having been hailed, um, I just put some pencil lines up here. And now I'm painting on either side of some of those lines I just made just now, which gives them an intentionality Again, that our brain just gets a kick out of a little bit of confusion. Ooh, sweet. Okay, one more thing I'm going to do. Mix up again, for the third time now, a slightly lighter color. I should say lighter for the second time. Okay, and, and uh, part of this building... be a little high over here. Let me just drag this down a tiny bit. And it might <laughs> and it might be a little bit low over here. And yes, I might even get a ruler out. Just 
T-square, make sure that's straight. But that's good enough for now. Before I go, let me give you a wild ride again. Just bring you up real close so that you can see this um, building up close and really, really see some of the detail. Okay, does that make sense? Does that make, does that make visual sense? It doesn't make logical sense, you understand. All that, all those, let me get something to point with. This blue, not logical. Red, not logical. Green, purple, logical. Red up here, the lines, none of it serves the purpose of similitude or realism, but it all results in a cool looking building. All right, that's the end of that broadcast. Hey, let me see your comments. Before I go, oh, bunch of them. Good, you guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for your company. Are we wide angled? We are. <laughs> uh, Zamorai Art. Hello. Good to have you on board again. And Monique from the Netherlands again. Good to see you hear from you, Monique. And Michael. <laughs> I got a regular international crew. And I saw Mark from. Uh, uh, Australia, Mark's from, and Bruno from Germany. <laughs> Michael, is it translucent first and opaque? Sometimes, not always. In the final edit layer, sometimes I go right to opaque. Good question. And uh, Thinker, <laughs> thank you very much. That's fun to know. Good, I'm trying to think. I might have been to Ridgefield. I'll have to look it up. Been to Connecticut a couple times. Try to cityscape Grand Central Station. Good, 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 good. Thinker, um, send me a copy. Send me an email. Show me that painting. I'd love to look at it. And her finner, Amafial. I'm sure I've just butchered your name. I am so sorry. Her finner. Her finner. or ah. Ama. Amafial. <laughs> Good, the, the video you wanted to see forever. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hey, hello, Ken X. Just found it today. Well, welcome on board, Ken. Good to have you here. I already did three videos. <laughs> Good for you. Thank you, man. Good to have you on board. Hello, David Vincent. You know, you know what, David? Good question. I'm glad to hear it's running well. Um, I went back to trans transmitting from my camera itself, which is a, a hotspot, you know, internet hotspot. But that's precisely what wasn't working last week. So, thank. I'm glad. I'm glad it's working well. Appreciate that, Toby. Good to have you on board as well. What matters about color is how dark or light it is and how cool and warm it is. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, I, red, white, and black. <laughs> that, that is, you know, he's exaggerating, but it's so. That's such a good truth. It really is. It really is. Thank you. And Nicholas Bravo. Good to have you also. Well, David, thank you. You're very kind. Being, yeah, being humble again. No, no sooner do you say something nice to me than I'm unhumble again. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks very much. I appreciate it. Like I said, I hope to broadcast. Uh, I'm giving a lecture about beauty tonight. Not for the faint of heart. And uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Hope you can join me. Thanks. Bye-bye.